broken lines fly by like tracer bullets or get eaten up like some supersonic Pac-Man. This is no special effect. This is 180 miles an hour. So my dream as a child was to work on fighter jets, F-15s, F-16s. That was always my, my dream is to be able to design things like that. I thought the way to get to designing that look was through aerodynamics. So I actually got my master's in aerodynamics and then I found out that aerodynamics only has so much to do with the way something looks. The actual structural performance of the, of the vehicle that does define how, how it's shaped. I was hired by Mazzini and without Mazzini's mentoring and I would say the, the true DNA of Lamborghini, I would not have been able to capture the craft approach to, to carbon fiber, to the, the art of carbon fiber. Well, the people that, that I met and worked with when I was hired at Lamborghini at the time, you know, and then in 2001 Lamborghini was only about 300 people, and of which about 45 in research and development. So I remember working closely with Maurizio and Mazzini and the, the Lamborghini spirit and soul really got into me because I was blessed by being surrounded by those people at that time. The craftsmanship and the artisan approach to carbon fiber there is really what opened my eyes. The ACSL is tasked with the initial technology development, so we try new materials, new processes, we develop new structural concepts, such as new designs for monocoques, new design for integrated frames, and, and, and other structural concepts. The reason we're located in Seattle, Washington, is because it allows us easy access both to the North American as well as to the Asian supply chain. The idea of establishing the laboratory, the ACSL laboratory in the States, first and foremost, was to be able to draw from the aerospace, knowledge base, and industrial base. The ACSL is one of the three Lamborghini carbon fiber organizations. The three organizations, ACSL, ACRC, and CFK, work in some sort of a, a chain where the ACSL does the initial development, the ACRC transforms that into a real product, and the CFK makes it happen every day for the customer. So our goal is to try you know, very high risk things. Some of them work, some of them of course don't, but then get them to work for Lamborghini somehow. In the 1980s, I remember the uh, carbon fiber or composite materials was um, expensive, was not uh, available the know-how or the knowledge for uh, development of the cars was only used in the aerospace and the Formula One. This is why we used in the history glass fiber. And nobody really believed in this technology. Everybody was skeptical. Uh, matter of fact, the first program, the Kunta Evoluzione, which was crash tested, the Lamborghini also learned that they were not ready to get that into production. CSL team has to be able to be extremely well-rounded, extremely versatile, and able to cover the entire spectrum of activities that, that pertain to carbon fiber for, for Lamborghini. Uh, we have our senior engineer, who is one of the most experienced crash analysts worldwide. She has been working on crash activities with Boeing, with the FAA, and with Lamborghini for years, and she's able to run the most advanced crash simulations that are possible. One of the laboratory's biggest contribution is actually to take the aerospace approaches, which we call the building block approach, by going through a pyramid of complexity in both analysis and testing that minimize risk by the time you get to the full vehicle. 
automakers utilize pure certification by test where they actually build the vehicle and test it. Uh, and that in some cases of our competitors has led to as many as 48 crash tests of one vehicle in order to pass it. And with the Aventador, we were able, through this building block approach, to be able to certify the Aventador with just a one crash test. So that, of course, can save a lot of trouble and, and money down the road. And in the period of about 2011 was the development of the repair strategy for Lamborghini. Lamborghini is the first automotive maker that's been uh, certified by the TUV, which is a German certification agency has been certified for you know, repairing the carbon fiber structure. Lamborghini is now able to actually repair it. You know, a lot of that was based on work that we did together with Boeing, consists in actually flying a crew. In the aerospace world, it's called AOG crew, so airplane on ground crew. The Lamborghini developed a similar crew, they call them flying doctors, but these doctors are able to fly to the location where there's the damaged car and actually perform the repair there. If there is one consuming passion in this country, it is with cars. If there is one consuming passion in Italy, it is with cars. If there is truly a dream car to satisfy those passions, the name it bears is this, Lamborghini. And the reason why in the last century, people like Ferruccio Lamborghini started a company like Automobile Lamborghini is for the sheer desire to build something that lets just people go, wow. Look at the LM. I mean, the LM was by far the first SUV. 180 kilometers an hour on sand. I mean, it was just designed to make people like, holy Moses, what's that? Uh, several components were, were composite on the LM, the hood, the roof, and the four fenders. So there's actually a lot of composites work in that uh, vehicle because, again, it was so massive that they had to get the weight down in every possible way. The Countach Quattro Valvole was the start of featuring carbon fiber uh, front bonnet and engine bonnet in 1985. The Diablo that was launched in the late 80s, over its life saw the number of components in composites and carbon fiber increase dramatically, so much that the last version, such as the Diablo GT or the Diablo VT, have extensive use of carbon fiber throughout the entire body. The Murcielago was the triumph of carbon fiber for body panels. The entire body, with the exceptions of the doors, was carbon fiber. Uh, the Murcielago example, Aventador example, the carbon fiber is not visible anywhere by default. The philosophy is that Lamborghini uses carbon fiber in the purest way so that it's not visible, it's under the hood. So the Morcilago was all painted, the body panels were all painted, no visible carbon. The structure was covered in leather, so it was not visible. So the customer had no idea. We talked to many customers, even here in Seattle, that had no idea that there was carbon fiber on the Morcilago. But, but, customers have this thirst for carbon fiber, and eventually, history repeats, eventually Lamborghini starts launching the interior package, the X-frame for the Murcielago, and similarly, the history is repeating for the Aventador, where after a few years, all of a sudden, there is so much demand for it that, that there, you know, there's a carbon fiber X-frame for the Aventador. The Huracan, which replaces the Gallardo since 2014, is actually a much more advanced chassis and it features carbon fiber extensively utilized in the tunnel, in the floor, in the rear bench, uh, and in the B-pillar section. So the entire rear of the passenger cell, carbon fiber is utilized. It complements well the aluminum work toward the front of the vehicle. And, and it was through our efforts with the Aventador and spearheading liquid resin molding, and then through the Sesto Elemento and spearheading forged composite, that we were able to take all of those technologies and be able to introduce them into the Huracan, which otherwise would have likely featured the same aluminum construction of the Gallardo otherwise. In the Sesto Elemento, you can see the Cofanghi, which are the front and rear body panels that comprise not only the front bonnet, 
but they comprise also the two front fenders and the bumper. So in one component, you have four different components that you'd have in a different car. So now you can see where the composites work in the case of the Sesto Elemento, but in the case of the Aventador as well, is no longer just the work of a structural part. It's now the work of so many parts that also have to have an aesthetical appearance. All of a sudden, you know, start showing a little bit of skin. And so you start showing a little bit of carbon, more carbon, more carbon. And for, so for us, the Sesto was a triumph because it was naked. There was no paint, no seat, no leather, no dashboard. It was just carbon and it was visible. When Mazzini started the foundational work on the Aventador in 07, one of the tasks at the time, over 20 years of experience, his goal already for the Aventador was to develop something that could be done at a higher volume and in a much smarter way. All our activities have to comply with is the AIM strategy, which is automation, integration, and modularity. This being an example, this replaced something near you know, the top of the Sesto replaced something like 72 aluminum components of the Gallardo into one piece, to give you an idea. And so that's integration. Uh, it's an example of automation because this can be done in six, seven minutes. Uh, and that can be done without any human intervention. So that's automation. And we got the modularity that we're working on a lot, where we can hopefully make this into something that with uh, with minimal changes can be made into a longer, a wider, narrower, taller component. We discovered these new technologies that is called for the composites to bridge a new mindset, new solution in order to create new opportunities with carbon fiber materials for new volumes and decreasing cost and more opportunities about the AIM. Only the Forza Composites can be uh, satisfied this requirement. Introducing these shorter fibers, you know, which have inherently lower strength than, than, than the traditional fibers was a big, big challenge because you're, you're starting to work with a material that is weaker than the traditional one. So it's only through very complex uh, engineering that you can actually recover that lower strength by making your part stronger. So that's where engineering design really comes in. 15 years ago, what we wanted to do was just a dream, and now it's on the road. It is rather, it's, it's rather cool. It's very rewarding. To put on the car the best as possible, uh, the, the feeling about uncompromising uncompromising and uh, the first level. We need to win. Technologies, materials, design, performance, and also innovation. This is why we represent the bull, that is most aggressive and uh, change direction. And I think that's the underlying philosophy behind Lamborghini is it's extreme uncompromising Italian, as Winkelmann says, because you cannot tame it, you know? I mean, that's the nature of Lamborghini. And so, and to, to, to just be out there with new stuff that was not possible before. So I think that is indeed a continuation of that. It's the untamable bull.